Before we get started with the Sales Integrity Podcast, if you haven't already signed up for our free video email course titled Seven Steps to Master the Game of Complex Technical Selling, then you'll want to do so right away. If you're listening on your phone, then simply text the word SI course to the number 44222 or visit mastercomplexsales.com. Again, text the word SI as in sales integrity, so SI course, which is all one word with no spacing at all, to the number 44222 or visit mastercomplexsales.com. Now let's get started with the podcast. Hello, sales achievers. Welcome to the Sales Integrity Podcast. I'm Sean Pickett, founder and CEO of Sales Integrity, a sales coaching services provider, and also the founder of my coach site, a coaching enablement software provider. This podcast is all about helping sales professionals, leaders, and organizations with a complex technical B2B sale to increase sales and earn more money, period. Today's theme, Throwback Thursday. On Thursdays, I look back to old school selling principles that are either still applicable today or that we can learn from in terms of what not to do. Think of sales process, methodologies, and principles that stand the test of time as taught by legends such as Zig Ziglar, Dale Carnegie, and others. At times, I'm even going to use Throwback Thursdays to incorporate lessons of certain scenes from legendary sales movies or review controversial articles or books to determine their applicability in today's modern selling world. So get ready to dive into today's Throwback Thursday topic, and let's get today's episode rocking and rolling. Welcome to this week's Throwback Thursday edition of the Sales Integrity Podcast. Today, we will throw it back to a legend, Zig Ziglar, and learn a valuable lesson from Zig on the topic of trust and how it affects your selling success. Personally, Zig is one of my all-time favorites, and here's why. My dad worked for Sears for 30 years and went through their extensive management training program. Now, as he was moving up the corporate ladder, he placed a huge emphasis on personal development, constant learning, and never-ending growth. He is an avid learner who has a huge home library of books and, and motivational tapes. And when I was growing up in my parents' home as a child during my formative learning years, a good portion of my dad's library consisted of Zig Ziglar materials. So starting around age eight, I began my personal development growth journey as a result of accessing my dad's home library. My dad would also play Zig Ziglar motivational tapes in the car, or I would play them on my 1980s Walkman as I mowed the lawn, so I became very familiar with Zig's endearing Southern draw and was mesmerized with the way he spoke and delivered his messages. The very first book I remember reading that really made sense and started to resonate with my eight-year-old brain was Zig Ziglar's See You at the Top book. See You at the Top was Zig's first book, published in 1975, and still remains an authentic American classic that is referenced today by top sales and business leaders worldwide. Zig would go on to author 30 more books in his illustrious career as a motivational speaker and author. So Zig's advice is simply timeless and transcends generations. My personal favorite quote of Zig's, which was introduced and taken directly from See You at the Top, and is the book's major premise, is this. You can get everything you want in life if you help enough other people get what they want. I have never forgotten that quote as it has always stuck with me. I have lived this mantra my entire life and believe wholeheartedly in it. That is why I believe so much in the power of strategic networking with like-minded professionals. I also believe that any sales professional who's worth their weight in salt has that same attitude that Zig preached back then, which is now known as servant leadership in today's business world. However, I won't focus on much Uh, that much on that particular principle for today's podcast. I did, however, obviously feel strongly enough about it uh, that I brought it up as a great reminder for B2B tech sales professionals because people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And that's another timeless Zig Ziglar quote and lesson that should be learned and applied not only in the sales world, just in life in general. So that is a nice segue to lead me into today's topic at hand. 
which is a lesson from Zig Ziglar on trust and selling. One of the other 30 books Zig wrote was simply titled Ziglar on Selling, published in 1991. So this still falls under the Throwback Thursday concept as I will pull one clip from this book and discuss how it's relevant in today's modern selling world. One of the chapters of that book is appropriately titled Selling in the Modern Market. Now, when Zig referred to the modern market in this book, he was talking about selling in the 1990s. However, you will most likely agree that what I'm about to share is still applicable today. Here's a quick clip from that chapter. Zig says, the one thing that customers have always rated highest in the sales world is trust, which also is called dependability because it is a direct reflection on the integrity of the individual. The primary reason people will choose not to buy from you is lack of trust. That ends the first part of that clip from the book. The second part uh, relates to follow through, and I will save that for tomorrow's Finisher Friday topic. So as it relates to trust for today, let me weigh in here. This goes back to the old adage that people buy from people they know, like, and trust, which is still applicable today. I made the comment in a previous podcast episode that you are in the profession of selling, so you are a professional salesperson. But you need to keep in mind that your prospects and customers are not in the profession of buying. They are simply not professional buyers. Rather, their professional focus is on operations, finance, technology, administration, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They just happen to have a need to leverage technology as a, a strategic business tool to achieve one of three things. Number one, top line growth. Number two, bottom line results. And number three, operational efficiency, which really drives top line growth and bottom line results. To further describe this topic, top line growth refers to growing a company, increasing sales, or increasing revenue. Bottom line results refers to reducing expenses or costs while increasing margin or profit. And simply put, improving operational efficiency allows a company to achieve both top line growth and bottom line results by helping them get things done in less time. I promise you, if you map your product, services, and solutions to one or more of these outcomes and tangible business benefits that your prospects and customers are seeking, then that is a great start towards establishing credibility, which leads to trust. So getting back to understanding the mindset of your target market customers, their need to leverage technology as a strategic business tool to achieve any one of the three outcomes I just outlined puts them in a buying situation. As a result, they will automatically have their guard up when it comes to dealing with new salespeople they don't know. After all, if they don't know you, then they won't like or trust you yet. Trust is earned over time and through multiple touch points where you demonstrate through your consistent behavior, and that's the key word, consistent behavior, that you can be trusted and are dependable. It is also worth noting that you need to have their best interest in mind once you do connect with new prospects as you guide them throughout their buying journey. This is why I end each podcast with the same message to help your prospects and customers buy what they want, what they need, and what benefits them. This mindset, uh, I'm sorry, this mindset personified demonstrates that you have good intentions. And if that is the case, then that will shine through to your prospects and customers throughout your interactions with them, and you will begin to earn their trust with this approach. So how can the modern B2B tech sales professional earn trust from prospects they have never met, so therefore could not demonstrate their dependability through various interactions, you might ask? Good question. The answer is staring you right in the face in the form of modern technology combined with social selling. Yes, that's right. You have all the tools in the world that you need to establish trust and demonstrate credibility in today's modern selling world. You can set up a personal YouTube channel and then create videos focused on your point of view about the specific niche of the technology world you emphasize through your product services and solutions. These should be educational videos and not videos where you're directly selling your stuff. That's a great way to get prospects to run for the hills. A good start is to demonstrate or discuss how similar businesses are leveraging your technology to help them achieve real results that your prospective customers who happen upon the video might also seek. You can then use those videos and your YouTube channel 
as lead-in value-added content you share upon the first few touch points to gain attention and initially connect with prospects. You seek first to help them by adding value to their evaluation process out of the gates before you get what you want. Sound familiar? This is Zig's principle in action here. You can also write brief articles and publish them on LinkedIn using the same purpose-driven approach that I just described for creating and sharing videos. So these are just simply two examples, but I think two leading examples of something you can apply right away that I know for a fact is working really, really well in the B2B um, tech sales world today. Think about it. If a prospect has a choice between a competitor of yours who is non-existent on the internet in you, who has built up a solid reputation through YouTube videos and LinkedIn articles that they can evaluate before they even connect with you, then who do you think they will choose to reach out to first? You, of course, because you will have a distinct competitive advantage by giving them a chance to start a relationship with what I like to refer to as the virtual you, which is less daunting than reaching out to a live salesperson. Make sense? Good. Not only that, I liken it to the age-old question. If a tree falls in the forest and no one is around to hear it, then does it really make a sound? We've all heard that one, right? Well, along those same lines for the selling profession, if a prospect conducts research on the internet to search for a solution and a salesperson hasn't created any value-added content that prospect can find and evaluate, then does that salesperson really exist in the prospect's mind? I think you get my point. You can't sell to someone who doesn't know you exist and who doesn't trust you. The, tech, the, the techniques and tactics that I just walked you through, that's going to help you solve both those problems. Now, I want you to think about this. I'm sure at one point in everyone's life, they felt like they personally knew their favorite movie stars or even business celebrities they follow because they are so present on social media and in the mainstream media. You will leverage that same authority figure or niche celebrity phenomenon uh, using the approach that I just outlined. This will help put you in a position to connect with more prospects and win more business by demonstrating dependability and earning trust, whether through the virtual you, as I called it, within recorded videos or written articles, or through the live you that the virtual you hands the baton to within the buyer's journey. I really hope this gets your wheels spinning for how you can apply this approach to your sales game. In closing, I was fortunate enough to meet Zig Ziglar in 2011 before he passed away in 2012. It was one of my happiest moments in my business career as the 38-year-old me at the time was realizing a dream 30 years later that the 8-year-old me always had of meeting Zig in person. It was truly a special moment for me as I was able to join him in his office in Plano, Texas for one of Zig's famous Monday morning devotional meetings. And the really cool thing was his message was the same in 1981 when the eight-year-old me first started learning from him as it was 10 years later in 1991 when he published his Ziegler and Selling book that we discussed today as it was 20 years later from that point in 2011 when I met Zig personally as it is today. And that message is this, although the instruments used for earning trust might change, such as the contrast between buyer-seller dialogues of yesteryear in the 1990s with the technology and social selling techniques of today's modern selling world in 2017, trust is still a requirement for achieving success as a sales professional, no matter what form or fashion it is demonstrated. Well, that does it for today's Throwback Thursday episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, let's finish up with some quick reminders. First, we recently launched two new B2B tech sales professional groups, one on LinkedIn and one on Facebook. Just search for B2B tech sales professionals on either LinkedIn or Facebook or both if you want to join both groups and join the conversation with your peers there. Second, if you haven't already subscribed to our free seven-day video email course titled Seven Steps to Master the Game of Complex Technical Selling, then you will definitely want to do so right away. You can do so by visiting mastercomplexsales.com or by texting the word SI course to the number 44222. Again, visit mastercomplexsales.com or text the word SI is in sales integrity. So SI course, all one word with no spacing. If you put a space between SI and course, you'll get an error message back. So make sure it's all one word. 
SI course and text that to the number 44222. After subscribing, we will send you your first lesson via email right away and then one lesson a day for the next seven days. Third, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or SoundCloud. Just search for the Sales Integrity Podcast with Sean Pickett, and it should pop up and allow you to subscribe on one of those two channels. After you subscribe, please provide a quick five-star rating and a one to two sentence review to help others find the show. We are going to be published on Stitcher Radio, Google Play, and eventually iHeart Radio and other channels. However, we are a brand new podcast. This is week two here. Um, so we're not on those channels uh, just yet, but bear with us. We're going to get there soon and we'll let you know what we do. And finally, please share the podcast with your colleagues and friends who would find it relevant. You can do so by going to salesintegrity.com and click the sales integrity podcast menu link at the top of the page. All of the podcasts are there and it provides you a way to click a button and share any episode, whether via email to individuals or if you want to blast it out to social media, there's some buttons on there as well. If you're so inclined, we would appreciate that. So, That will do it for today's episode. Now go out there in the sales world today and help your prospects and customers buy what they want, what they need, and what benefits them. And most importantly, go out there and make it a great day.